Hello, Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are going to be doing a little pressure test on this uh, air compressor tank. This is a tank that I picked up some time back. Uh, it's not terribly old. I mean, it was built back in 1984. And in the grand scheme of things, yeah, that's not all that terribly old, but it is an older tank. It has been used for some time. And before I put it back in service, I wanna make sure it's gonna be safe and that we're not gonna have an accident with this thing. Compressed air contains an awful lot of potential energy. Air will compress and because it is compressed, it wants to expand, it wants to get larger. And if something were to happen and this tank were to rupture, it be could become a very violent, explosion, uh, sending shreds of metal all over the place. It's not some place that you want to be. And because of that, you want to be sure to get, the, to get your tank tested before you put an old tank back into service. Now, you can take it someplace and have them do it for you, but <laughs> me being the person I am, I'm going to do my own test. This will not, of course, be certified or anything like that, but it will at least give me the peace of mind in my shop to know that I've got a tank that's going to be safe. This particular tank uh, it was originally tested up to 200 pounds, or at least that's what it says on here. More than likely though, when they run a test, they're gonna usually on an air compressor tank, you're gonna wanna do 150% of what you're gonna be running it at. Now with this tank originally being tested at 200 pounds or approved at 200 pounds, that means it was probably tested at 300 pounds. I'm gonna be running this tank, uh, let's just say 150 PSI. It's probably gonna be the top end of what I do. I'm gonna work off of that number, derate it a little bit, but still give you plenty of a safety factor. For my purposes, uh, you know, 50% of uh, 150 is gonna be 75 pounds additional. So we, we're gonna test it up to about 225 pounds and that should give me plenty of safety factor. Now, the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna actually do a hydro test. So in other words, we're gonna be using water to test it with. Now, when you think about water, water will not compress like air does. Uh, water in, in its solid state, it is non-compressible. All right, if in you physics people out there, you may argue with me a little bit. There may be a very, very tiny amount of compression, but for all practical speaking, uh, water is not compressible. So what we're gonna do and what I've already done is I filled the tank up to this point right here with water. We're gonna fill it the rest of the way up here in just a minute because I'm having to come in on a spout on the top. Uh, we're gonna be putting the pressure on the side. I'm gonna be putting a gauge up on the top here. Uh, I'm gonna fill the rest of it up here on the side. I don't wanna have any air in the tank or you basically eliminate all of it that I can. So we'll fill the water up from the side until it's just running over. I'm gonna cap this thing off. We will put a uh, pressure gauge in here and then I will pressurize, pump the pressure up. Now, in my case, what we're gonna be doing is a pressure pump is I'm gonna be using a pressure washer over here. Need to be careful though, this pressure washer is capable of going up to 3000 PSI and uh, we only wanna be at about 200. So we'll be taking little short bumps with it and hopefully be able to get close to that 200 PSI. If by chance, because we're using water rather than air to test this, if by chance the, the, the test would fail and you would actually get pressure to release, because it's water inside the tank, there really is not that great of a risk of any kind of explosion because as soon as you get any leak at all, uh, the water pressure inside the tank will almost instantaneously drop because once you get a place for that water to go, it's going and then you're basically just back to um, uh, just atmospheric pressure, which is not gonna be dangerous. You don't have that compressed air that is wanting to expand. Water's not wanting to expand. Boom, you get a little leak, pressure drops down, everything's cool. So it, it's a lot safer to test it with solid water than it was there. Enough talking, let's get in here. I'm gonna put the pressure washer on here. We're gonna fill it up from the side until we get up here, cap it off. Run the pressure up, probably hold it there for about five minutes and assuming we hit that 225 number, I'm gonna count this thing off as a positive. We're gonna put this tank in service. If by chance it were to fail, well, then it goes to the scrap yard. Let's do it. So here on the side of the tank, I've got a quick disconnect that fits the wand of my pressure washer. And now, like I said, I'm already filled up to this level, so we're gonna fill it up till the water comes out the top. Water should be going in. I can hear the air coming out. So let's, uh, let's go ahead until we get that water coming out. All right, looks like we got a geyser. So uh, we're gonna put a pressure gauge on that now. 
so I've got water right here to the top. And yeah, there's a little bit of a dome above this, so I probably do have a little bit of an air pocket above it. Uh, but unless I test on that top plug, and that top plug is in there so tight I couldn't get it out a while ago. And there's no reason for me to take it out, so we're going to leave it on there. I'm putting a pressure gauge on here. This is a 400-pound pressure gauge. So it will go above what we want to test to. There we go. Right, so let's bump it up there. I'm just going to kind of hit my wand here and take that pressure on up. All right, our pressure gauge is starting to rise up. Hundred pounds. That's about 225 right there. So we're gonna let this sit here for a few minutes. Well guys, when I first did it, the pressure dropped off just a little bit. I bumped it back up to 225 and it has held right there for every cent. So um, we've basically been there for at least five minutes now. I'm not seeing any visual leaks anywhere around it. Uh, pressure test is good. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead. I've got a, a release valve down here in the bottom. We'll go ahead and turn that on and uh, let the water come out. There we go. Let me pull this off. And there you go, that's all there is to it. We're gonna count this as a pass. Uh, we'll go ahead and let this water drain back out. Make sure we get this uh, tank cleaned out or dried out really well. You know, one last thing about the, the pressure ranges. Uh, you know, I said we're gonna use 150% on compressed air. Some people will do a 200% test, particularly I know when we're testing steam boilers, we typically always use uh, twice as much pressure, but compressed air doesn't have quite the same amount of, uh, of uh, expansive power as steam does. So typically on compressed air, 150% is considered okay. I'm sure this tank probably would have pumped up to 300 pounds without any problems, but uh, we're good at 225. And with that, guys, it's positive. This joker passes. We're gonna get her set up with an air compressor and a pump here and a motor, everything ready to go and put this tank back into service very soon. That'll be it. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, leave me a thumbs up if you like what you see. Comments if you like down below. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.